There are certain tools and techniques that are so important as writers. And from this day forward, I no longer want you to say, someday I'm going to write a book, or someday I'm going to write. I want you to say, I am a writer. And that's what you're going to leave with, because I have spent so many years in the writing process that we have all the tools and tips right there. We're going to be passing them out as we go. And I was fortunate enough to meet Shivana at an event several years ago. She was a former Miss Canyon Lake. And, um, and then after that, she was a judge. And I was also a judge for Miss Canyon Lake. And we sat beside each other at our luncheon. And she said, you know, I always wanted to write a book. There it goes again. <laughs> Every person says that to me as soon as I say, yeah, I'm a writer. And, um, and so she said, could we have coffee? Oh, could we have coffee? And I said, great, let's have coffee. And so at that point, I hadn't decided to do anything formally. I was thinking about doing formally uh, uh, classes, coaching. But I hadn't done it at that point. And I think it was Shivana who actually inspired me <laughs> to start formulating the ideas for doing this because it there's nothing that I love more than writing but also sharing what I know and sharing how to write. I want to share a dozen reasons for you to write and these are sort of fun because I don't know how many of you have thought why you wanted to write but here are some reasons that writing can actually benefit you. The first one is all books are born from a story that is literally bursting inside of you. So now is your time to let it burst. And you are a seed that is just about to burst into a tree of your legacy. Because what do we leave behind? We leave our stories, we leave our legacy. You know, I'll never forget when my grandmother died, she always used to make applesauce and apple pie. And when she died, I thought, but grandma, you forgot to tell me how to make your apple pie. And that was like, my, my heart just broke because for me that was my sharing time with her. I used to make apple pie with her. And so these are your moments, your stories. One of the authors that I helped last year, um, she, her, she, her son had passed and she said, you know, I realized that he died not knowing who I am because my stories lived inside of me and uh, none of my children know who I really am and so I want to write a book about it. And she wrote her book, and it is published, and uh, it came out in March, and her children are now reading it, and they said, Mom, I never knew. I never knew. But more importantly, what happened to her through the process? She said it changed her. She had things that she never realized affected her life so deeply. And you can actually see, and Shivana is a testament to this, how layer upon layer upon layer of your story will come out as you're going through the writing process. Now, why is this important? It's important even if you're writing fiction. Because I can tell you, um, in the writing process, well, I used to write with my husband, David Jekapa. He's since passed. But we had a 26-year career in the entertainment business. And we wrote fiction. We wrote sci-fi shows. We wrote, you know, all different kinds of shows. And um, we had to draw from our own perspective. What would we do if we were that character? How would we react if we were that character? Uh, stories that actually happened to me or to my husband went into a script. In fact, my uh, there's a he did a movie called Man of the House with Chevy Chase and Jonathan Taylor Thomas and Farrah Fawcett. And that movie is actually a fictional story. However, it was based on my husband's relationship with my son in Indian Guides, when they went through Indian Guides together. And it was a blockbuster movie for Disney. And in fact, I think, uh, as I recall, the, the, the fair faucet was named Sandy. And, <laughs> yeah. and um, Chevy Chase was hilarious, as usual. But um, these are the moments that we were able to bring in our own stories and funny things that happened into our fiction work. So you see, writing your story and knowing your story is really the key to you being a writer of any type of work. So we're going to talk about more The Tree of Legacy as we go on. Number two, the practice of writing helps you learn more about yourself. This is what I was just saying. And heal. It puts pieces of your puzzle of life 
together and it gives you a new perspective. Sally said, I'm not the same person I was from when I started my book to when it is now published. Um, number three, it's exciting. There is no more exciting feeling than saying, I'm an author, I have a book. And every, for those of you who don't know, I do a Periscope program, a live stream broadcasting every Monday through Thursday, and I have a lovely audience, you're one of them, you're one of them. Um, and it's so um, exciting to get on there. And the first thing I say, for those of you who don't know me, I'm an author, I'm a writer, I've written four books, two of them award winning, and I'm really, really proud of being a Yes. Um, and those are proud moments. I mean, we have to start sharing our proud moments. I grew up in an era where my mother always said, Sandy, don't brag, don't brag, don't brag. You know, and that was sort of a thing in that era that we weren't allowed to shine. One of the things that it also does is, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but um, people want to know who you are. You need your credibility, right? Wear it proudly, my goodness. If I was up here and I didn't tell you that um, I had four books, would you even listen to me about writing or that I had a 26 year career with my husband? No, this is why our stories are valuable to us. Every woman has a story, every woman has a strength, every woman has something to be proud of. Let it shine, this is the era where we can let it shine. Writing is an influential force in the thinking and actions of our world. Books motivate, encourage, explain, express, and change people. It takes writers to write those books. And you are going to be one of those. Number four, writing a book can open personal and professional doors. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you're going to be a, a very important speaker at a conference coming up, and she has a book. Yes. You know, that's huge. It, books are the new calling card. Um, if you have a business, if you're going up for a job, say you're going up to speak to an organization, and you have a book and the other person doesn't, who do you think they're going to pick? The book gives you credibility. Mm -hmm. um, it opens doors. Speaking opportunities, media appearances, guest blog posts, and other exposure. And one thing happens, and another happens, and another happens, and another happens. Number six, it frees you of your hidden secrets and exposes them to light. Ooh. This doesn't mean you have to end up publishing anything you're uncomfortable with. But you will have an opportunity to work out your stuff in writing. And you'll leave some of it, the pain, on the page. There is a reason why writing is used in therapy. Shalom will talk more about that, but there was a study done by James Pembaker in uh, Texas um, University, and he said that something happens in the process of using your brain to emotion to emotionalize and then translate into words going down your arm onto the written page. Okay, it gives your brain a workout. I feel exhausted after I write. There are endorphins flying from excitement, and it is really like the, the muscle workout for your brain, for the gym, like going to the gym for your brain. Um, writing makes you a better communicator and skill sharpener. You cannot write a book and not learn something more about words, about grammar, about you know commas, paragraphs, all of it. When you start to write your story, you become aware of new things that you can add to your life, new words, new things. And you start to criticize every other written item that you see. Like, wait, you start looking at books differently. I used to just look at a book and just read it. Now I look and say, hmm, the text on there, I wonder why they chose that cover. Because when I was doing my cover, it just right. looked at everything different. <laughs> it's true. Writing makes you a better communicator and skill sharpener. If you're a coach, a business owner, a pastor, a teacher in public relations, and many, many other areas of life, it raises the bar on your capabilities and your effectiveness. If you can't share a story in a good way, you are not as effective in communicating what you want to a friend, a client. I, uh, my profession is real estate. I connect on a story level first. 
A lot of real estate agents know how to do real estate. All you have to do is, you know, you take the test and then you learn all the skills and, and it's a learning process, yes. But a lot of people can write contracts. A lot of people can put stuff in the MLS, but connection is a whole different ballgame. A whole different ballgame. And if you learn how to communicate better, your story becomes an integral part of who you are. And um, interestingly enough, <laughs> the universe works in very odd ways, but I'm always getting people who have experienced loss. And somehow, that has been the great common denominator in a lot of my transactions because I'm able to share my stories of loss and give them a safe place to talk. You find your purpose. Writing is the greatest opportunity to sort through your life and uncover your life's purpose. All of a sudden you see layers of what you're really good at. What, what challenges in your life force you to make new skills and, and new friends and new connections? It's an amazing way to analyze your life and say, oh, that's what it all means. Number 11, writing is an investment in your future. Why? Because whatever effort, time, and energy you invest will benefit and enhance your life. You begin to feel the power of your own words, how you've layered on the life experiences to equal the sum total of who you are today. You'll discover how you can shape your next steps and choices in life. Writing your story is one way to project your future, and we're going to go into that uh, a little bit later because we have a really fun gift for you. It's your life, your story. You get to choose how it ends, and there's one more. Books change the world. If you don't change the world, who will? <laughs> this is when I experience my dawn of conscious memory right here. Um, that's my this was at a birthday party. Yes, she is naturally ready. <laughs> I need help now, but... <laughs> um, <clears throat> the dawn of conscious memory happens somewhere between the age of three and six, um, technically. If it's before then, likely somebody told you a story and you kind of remember it a little bit, maybe, and you think it might be a memory that you have. But actually, your conscious mind wakes up clinically proven somewhere between the age of three and six. For me, it was four. My mom was standing right uh, by the, uh, I could see her in the distance, standing at the sidewalk waiting for me to be dropped off. And the little girl, who uh, I thought was my best friend, said, um, oh, you see that thing in the door? If you pull that, but if you push that button down, watch what happens. So I pushed the little button down, and I thought, oh, well, what's gonna happen? And then it pops up, and I thought, well, that's funny. She says, now lift it up and stick your finger down there and see what happens. Well, I stuck my finger down there, and it was a cigarette lighter that was red hot. Remember when they were in the doors? Red hot, and I pulled it out, and there was a circle on my finger, and I was so upset, I wanted to cry. And I stuck my finger underneath my leg because I didn't want her to see that I was vulnerable, that I had this thing happen because she thought it was so funny. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, this changes everything. I feel so like she hurt me. And, um, but yet it was such a joyful day because I got to go to a birthday party and I felt so independent and got to wear, wear my party shoes and everything. And it was such an exciting day. So I stopped, um, so I got out of the car and my mom said, did you have a good time, Sandy? And I threw my arms around her and I didn't cry. And I didn't tell her, I said, it was great. She said, well, that's great. Do you want to do that again? I said, yes, I want to go, I want to be able to go places again. And so why I didn't tell my mother, I don't know. Um, I can look at it from many different perspectives. I think it was exerting my independence. It was the first time I'd ever lied to my mother. I didn't tell her. I should have told her. You know, sometimes we don't. And um, and yet it was the happiest day because I got to go to a birthday party. So that was my dawn of conscious memory. So think back. That's the first thing you're going to put on your timeline. <clears throat> dawn of conscious memory. That says DCM right on the beginning of yours. Um, write with a pencil because I guarantee you that when you start writing in a pen, you're going to say, oh, but now I remember this. 
and now I remember this. And you can either do it in ages. <clears throat> oh my God, I show how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> or you can do it in years. However you want to do it, it is going to be fine. Um, but start just with a little trigger. And I'm going to give you, <clears throat> why are these lines some longer than others? Because some of the events in my life um, had more meaning than others, and I started doing that, but then I sort of abandoned that idea when, because this is a very brief timeline. Um, the timeline I actually did is like this. But start with that, and then document in the next five minutes, document things in your life that are monumental. You know, if you talk to me about decades, you could have decades where you could talk about your life, the amazing life story of you. How do you do that? Well, your story doesn't necessarily begin from your dawn of conscious memory in your book. You're going to create a story arc. And what that means is when after you go through your timeline, every, when Shivana came to me, she put her whole life story in the first chapter. <laughs> she said, OK, well, now what do I write? <laughs> so, and it almost broke my heart because I gave her my one chapter and I was like, this is good. This is, good. This yeah. is chapter one. This is going to be brilliant. This is phenomenal. She's going to, I gave it to her and she was like, that's a chapter. That's a chapter. That's a chapter. I'm like, no, this is a good chapter. It's beautiful. Yes. I see it. It's right. Chapter one, none. No. And so she was right. There were about five or six chapters in that one chapter that I thought was right. finished. Right. <laughs> the other important thing for you to know is that you don't have to write your book from beginning to end. If you wake up one day and you want to write what happened to you in 2010, but your book starts in, in 1989, write what happened in 2010. You compile the book at the end. Go with where your inspiration is telling you to go, and your timeline is your greatest resource for inspiration. Because you're going to go to your timeline, and you are going to look at it and say, oh, okay. Um, this happened in 1989. I want to remember it. Now, I'm going to pass out the chapter worksheet first. Paula's going to pass it out. And you are going to um, look at your worksheet, and you're going to look at your timeline and say, which of your life moments are going to be chapter worthy? Because, you know, like in my story, um, I graduated high school and um, got an award. Okay, well, am I going to put that in the book? No, that's boring. That has nothing to do with, you know, really what my purpose of my book is. Um, as I coach my clients, I actually go into great detail about your why, who's your audience. We can't do it all in this short amount of time, but it is an important part for you to really, and, and I think all of you know your why. I mean, Catherine, that, your why is so profound. I mean, Joyce, I, I, all of you have such profound whys in this room. I, you know what, you always said the right number of people would show up, and I really feel like the right number of people showed up.